with no way up and I needed some help everybody breathing but not living just existing well and I needed some help somebody told me that Jesus will set you free
to stand and worship with the Lord. is a landmarking passage. Mm. It was a pivotal point in the life of the children of Israel. When they left Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea and God did a miracle. Wow. Now in order to establish Joshua, yes. God was doing another miracle and this was, they were no longer slaves and now yes. they're possessors of the land. Come on. Yes. So we're going to talk about this passage and understand what God is saying. Mm. Uh, Joshua chapter 3. I'm reading from the NIV. I'm reading down to 14 verses in your hearing to set the context of where we are. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out for Shechem and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officials, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, yes. and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out of your position and follow it. Yes. Then you will know which way to go. Yes. Since you have never been this way before. Yes. Since you have never been yes. this way before. Yes. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits mm. between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Yes. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself. Yes. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things mm. among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant up and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today, yes. I will begin to exalt you yes. in the eyes of all of Israel, so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Thank Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of Jordan's River, go and stand in the river. Mm. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here. Listen to the words of your God. This is how you will know that the living God yes. is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you yes. the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, yes. the Pizzerites, the Berishites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Mm. See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Mm. Now then choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who are carrying the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, mm -hmm. the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Bow your head for a word of prayer. Father, let me thank you again for your presence and Lord, for just who you are. What a comfort. What a joy in knowing we not only have a hiding place and a refuge, but we have a God who's on our side. God, I ask that you would bless everyone. I don't know what's going on in their lives, but you do, sir. So I ask you to give them that which they desire. We bind up the enemy and anything that will come against your word. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Let's thank God for our musicians. Yes. They do a great job. Oh, Phil be plucking keys, and they be getting it over there, or plucking the strings, and they be getting it over there. So I praise God for them. As long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow me, write this title down. We're going to talk about, it's time to break camp, Come on. if you want your breakthrough. Yes. It's time to break yes. camp, yes. if you want your breakthrough. Yes. One more time, it's time to break yes. camp. If you want your breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I tell a story in my book, Producing Under Pressure, about taking my son Justin to Philadelphia to buy him a new suit. I don't know whether it was Easter or Christmas, but it was for one of those times. I know we've gotten so sophisticated now that we don't dress up on holy days. Wow. Um, we, we've gotten to the point where we don't give God credence, but the tradition wow. was yeah. on a day, especially one of those two days, the, the two most uh, famous days in history, the two most important days in history, it was nothing we growing up in church, we had to dress up to show that God was just as good as a party. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And now I know we've broken some of those traditions, but the reality is 
that Christmas and Easter are the bookends of our salvation. We are now in the middle of Advent season. Advent is a Latin word that means Adventus, and the word means coming. What we're celebrating is the coming of Jesus. We should be excited about yeah. the fact that our Savior was yeah. born yeah. on Christmas Day. Yeah. So Advent season, which is four weeks of where we prepare ourselves and our hearts to bless God as He arrives, it started this year on November 27th and will end Christmas, Christmas Eve. A candle is lit each week to celebrate the anticipation that the Savior is coming. And then we have on the other end, of course, not only Advent, but correspondingly, we have Lenten. Lent season is when we pray, give alms, and fast so that we can prepare ourselves to celebrate. It's 40 days. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. So those are two of the most important days in history is when we know God was born and we know one day he rose from the dead. And Advent even covers a time when he is coming back. I, I just threw that in because we, it seems like now all we care about for Christmas is Black Friday, <laughs> Saturday or Monday, yeah. uh, Santa Claus, yes. and we no longer want to say Merry Christmas while we're not talking about Happy Holidays. No, yes. it's Merry Christmas. Yes. Christ was right. born. Right. I want to celebrate. Well, anyhow, I was going, we were in Philadelphia, me and Jessica was walking through, and there was a man on the sidewalk playing the saxophone. Tell that Grover Cleveland. I mean, he was getting it. Watch He was getting it. He sat there, and he had a little can down there, so we put some money in the can. When I walked a few steps, Justin said to me, he said, Dad, why is that man sitting on the sidewalk? He had tattered clothes on it. Looked like he, he needed a meal. He said, as good as he's playing, why is he out there doing something with his life? And I told Justin what I'm about to tell you, that this man fell on hard times. Yeah, yeah. But he never made it back. Yeah. See, what I want to tell you is all of us fall on hard times. And some people just don't make it back. What you ought to be celebrating is that that you had some hard times, but you made it back by the help of the Lord. I know when somebody recognized it was not you that got you here. If somebody let somebody know the reason I made it through my hard times is because God helped me get back from where I was. I would have lost it. I wouldn't have made it. Scripture. 
strong so you understand. And i got to say this to everyone. The reason I throw scripture out every week, first of all, I'm preaching, but the word of God is the only thing that will set you free. Oh, and just because you heard a scripture, I may use the same scripture, uh, you know, four weeks ago and I'll use it again now. That still don't deny the power in that scripture. Because that scripture is taken in another context. So don't sit there and tell me I heard that one. You're not going to write that one down. But you still don't know. Yes. You know, 
You sit next to someone and like to, I like to keep my business to myself. Oh, but all I'm telling you is, the Bible tells all of us yeah, yeah. we'll go through anxieties and fears and depressions and mental and emotional problems. But I love my God. you got to go to Philippians 4, yes. verses 4 through 8. God tells us what he wants yes. us to do. On, Isn't it something that even when I'm about to lose it, yes. God said, I made you a breakthrough Christian. All you have to do is focus on yes. what I tell you to do. Yes. In Philippians is 4 and 8. And I want to read this so you can get it. Because you already know the scripture. Rejoice. You know the best rejoice? Yes, yes. Is when you shouldn't be rejoicing. Right? You know the best deliverance is when something's going on, but you don't mind praising God anyhow. I wish I had some believers in here to tell somebody, my best praise is not when I'm feeling my best. Jordan. 
the priest carried the ark, the covenant, God ahead of him. When I read that, God stopped me. I, I couldn't read any further in the text. Because what God was saying, he said, that's what's wrong with my people. Yes. They got promises. Yes. They done prayed. Mm -hmm. They done shouted. Yes. They have my word. But when it's time to break camp, they don't yes. move. Yes. God said, don't take the final action. God said, you got to break camp to get your breakthrough. Some of y'all, when it's time to break camp, you ain't got enough faith to break camp. You say you trust God, but when the trouble comes, you're still in the same place. You stay in the same place year after year, shouting in church, going home feeling bad, and wondering why ain't no blessings coming in your life. You sit around and oh, God can do it. And then you let other stuff come out of your mouth because you're not ready to break camp. Oh, y'all ain't got it yet. Keep pushing when nothing's going wrong in your life. And when you see those of us still jumping around, because we 
know, when everything would be good and we walk into church. I, I, see, what Jasper understood, quiet time was what Jasper did. He rose up early. He didn't need quiet time. He had not been exalted yet. Can you imagine me and Joshua, all of those people uh, backbiting and talking bad, and now God had a nerve to put you in front of him? You know, Joshua was nervous, so he got up early to meet God for some quiet time. That's the problem. That's the problem. Many of us need quiet time all the time. I'm going to go, I have my, my quiet time with God, we get a little coffee, and we get a Bible, and we lay down. No, that ain't quiet time. Church the same way, he got the same way, go home the same way, and God said, No, that ain't gonna work. 
because you following me. And he told Joshua, he said, follow the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. Understand that. Ark of the Covenant. Remember, look at that word covenant. Ark of the Covenant. Don't touch the Ark of the Covenant. It was dangerous. Remember, it was in the uh, tabernacle of the wilderness. But he said, follow the Ark of the Covenant because when you follow the Ark of the Covenant, you understand three things about your walking God. Yeah. First of all, covenant means that God's plan of the covenant is, God said, my side of the covenant is to bless you. Your side of the covenant is just believe me. That's right. That's right. That's right. I bless you, you believe me. That's right. That's right. And we'll be covered. God said, but you won't even do that. Because how the covenant, how the ark does that? Because inside the ark of the covenant is three things. The golden jar of manna. Yeah. The manna means that God will supply. I know I got a witness. Right. So when you follow the ark, you're following the God who knows how to supply. Then there was Aaron's rod that budded. Aaron's rod was the same rod that Moses stood to turn the sticks. And it's in front of Egypt. Now turn the pool to blood in front of Pharaoh. Because God is saying, when you follow me, you also know I got enough power to do a miracle. That's right. Now stay with me. You follow God because he will supply. You follow God because he can do a miracle. He said, and also follow me because the Ten Commandments are in there. And I only give the commandments to my children. He said, today I will exalt you in Israel 
He said, I, I, I will know. I want you to know that I'm with you like I was Moses. When you do God's plan, write this down. First of all, he said, I'll exalt you. Yes. For God to exalt you means he's got to give you the things that you need. Yes. Stay with me, guys. Yes. Yeah. And God said, not what he said, when I exalt you, I'm going to let your exaltation be seen in front of everybody. Yeah. And not only that, he said, then I'm going to let you know I was with you as I was with Moses. Here's, here's the second thing that happened to you when you start consecrating yourself. I love this. Uh, um, when you start following God, he said, you will also have favor. Yes. Woo, come on, man. Yes. Yes. Divine favor. Yes. All favor is, is extra grace. Yes. He already gave me good grace. Now you're going to give me some. Y'all better. Some of you are only sitting here because God gave you some favor and he gave you some divine favor in a situation that you know you shouldn't have got out of. Where are the people that will thank God for his favor? I don't know why God treated me any better than he treated somebody else. I'm just a bigger sinner, but I will definitely testify that I have had favor. Can I see the hands of the foot and know God showed up in your life with some favor? It's grace I don't deserve. Thank you, Lord. I know some people think they deserve it. But the favor God shows me blows my mind. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. When you trust God and you got your belief system together, blessings can happen in your life. Understand where I'm going with this guy. I want to show you something. I always tell you to fact check me, but I want you to look at what happened to Sam Schumann who is one of the people who follow God but didn't really believe God, your belief is what sets you apart from other people. Yeah. In the 1970, Sam Schumann was diagnosed with liver cancer. Come on, Pastor. Told he only had a few months to live. Wow. He went home, and in a few months he was dead. Oh. Check this out. When he did an autopsy after he died, they went into his liver and found out that the disease was still contained inside the wall of the liver and he was not in any cancer stage where he should have died. Yeah. Fact check. Here's what it said. Sam Schumann did not die from liver cancer. Yeah. He died because he thought he had liver cancer. Yeah. He died because he believed he had liver cancer. Yeah. But he didn't have liver cancer. But what you believe will set your beliefs. Story. And so when you don't believe God, it's dangerous when you don't consecrate your own yeah. self. And when you do, God can bless you. Yeah. And then he said in verse 8, he said, when you follow God, he gives you favor. And he told the Israelites, come on closer, come on closer, verse 9. He said, I will deliver you from all of your enemies. Yeah. Well, that's what God does. How God miraculously rescues you when you're in trouble. Amen. And I'm going to my last point. Listen, guys. 18-month-old um, Lily Grossback. Her mom and her were riding along, and her mom drove off a slippery bridge in the dead of winter. Mom died instantly. She was down in the dark water off the bridge. A fisherman saw the end of the car, called the police. When the police got there looking, shining flashlights, all of a sudden he heard a voice. He said, help me. Wow. Police officer looked at the EMT e uh, e and said, you hear that? It says, somebody needs help. Y'all look this up. This stuff is rich. See, sometimes we put stuff. We don't want to imagine. This is something that happened that folk can't explain. Yeah. He said, help me. They heard it again. And it took them right to where the car was. They brought the baby up. And they said the baby was going to die. But the baby came back to life. Because at the same time, when voices were saying, help me, her family was home praying. Because wow. they hadn't heard from her or the baby. Wow. So my question that needs to be answered is, because when they looked around, wasn't nobody in the car but the baby. And the baby was in, in exhausted from the, from the cold. Who said, help me? Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah. The same voice. Yeah. I told God to help you. Yeah. When you didn't know how you were going to get out of your trouble. Yeah. You sitting here right now because every now and then, God got to bless you and can't nobody else bless you. Sometimes you don't even know what to ask for. And God will rescue you. Yeah. Yeah. Look it up. That thing shocked me when I was studying. It said they couldn't. Me. So you gotta follow God. You gotta make sure you're faithfully. And lastly, focus on God's wow. possibility. Let's close this thing out. Watch this, guys. Stay with me. Watch this. So the Jordan River, yeah. at its deepest point, is 1,300 feet deep. When it's at flood level. If you look at the text, it says it's from the city of Adam to the Dead Sea. Zaratan. That's about 25 miles. God put a plan in order, and then in verse 14, 
He said to them, now break camp. <laughs> he said, I told you what to do. Yes. You want to break them? Yes. Oh, break camp. He went, Joshua came down and said, all right, y'all, we get ready to go. You still see that water. You still see Jericho. Right. But they packed up this stuff. <laughs> see, break camp. You don't break camp. You can't get your breakthrough. Yeah. And all of a sudden, God said, and I need you to think differently. <laughs> When you leave church today, I'm not going back to that same dead place. I'm packing up my bag because I don't live there no more. Yeah. I'm moving in another direction because that ain't me no more. Come on, come on. And then he said, watch well, He said, then you got to do a step of faith. Look at the text. It said when the priest stepped their feet on the edge of the water, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the water went back. Now watch this. It was over 200 feet wide, the place they crossed. But the, the river from uh, Adam to the Dead Sea was 25 miles. Set you free. 